If you want to get the most out of your videos, then using light and using it correctly is where you start. This is the GVM SD80D. It's an 80 watt bicolor spotlight that is both battery powered and AC powered. This means you can plug it into a wall and you can also add the battery kit so you can take it with you wherever you go. Now the light also comes with a soft box and a light stand, so the light is ready to go out of the box. The GVM SD80D has a CR rating of 97 plus, which means the light is accurate at producing colors. This is not only important for your video, but it makes sure that your lights will match other quality lights you have. The light also features a built-in wireless controller, which gives you full control over the light with your phone. All you need to do is download the app and you're ready to go. If you have limited space and are doing a lot of talking head videos, like for YouTube, this light is going to work great for you. The light features a Bowens mount, which means you can attach different kinds of reflectors and soft boxes without needing any adapters. The side panel display gives you a nice big readout so you can see your color temperature, your light output power level, and your battery power level. This light also features some effects that you can use to give your video a little bit of a boost. You can have things like lightning, CCT loop, candle, bad bulb, TV, paparazzi, explosion, and pulsing. You also get a source matching option as well. This allows you to quickly and easily match your light with other lights that may have different color temperatures. Now, although this light isn't a very powerful light, it's a great light to get started with, and it can really make a huge difference in your overall look if you set it up correctly. I'm going to show you one way to add a moody look to your video using just this light. So first we're going to start with these clips and everything in here I'm going to put in the description of the video. These clips are just going to be what we're going to use to hold the blankets to the actual light stands here. And these are pretty strong and you have to actually have pretty strong hands to open these. So just a heads up. The second thing we're going to use is this sheet here. It's not really muslin. It's just a regular sheet, but it's off white and I think it's going to work fine for what we're going to use it for. The third thing here is this black blanket, and we're just going to use this on the opposite side of where we have the sheet so that the light doesn't spill and bounce off the walls. So I'm just going to give you guys a real quick tour of how I do this. Uh, I'm just going to show you what I've already done. I'm not going to go through it in real time, but I'm just going to show you what it looks like. So let's um, undo everything. So this is what it looks like when it first comes in. This is s Log 3. This is shot on the Sony FX30 10-bit 422. Uh, again, s Log 3. Um, what I like to do is I like to color into... Uh, my color space transform and into my dehancer. So what I'll do is I'll start with the color space transform. In this particular instance, I'm not actually using a color uh, color space transform. I'm using Phantom LUT. Um, I'm using the natural here, uh, Phantom LUT. And then this goes into uh, my dehancer here. So I like to start with these first and then I'll build into those because this is just my preference. I don't know if this is technically the way you're supposed to do it, but this is just the way I do it. Um, just like audio, like if, if, if you know anything about audio, you'll have your master bus compressor and you'll have all of your things on the end. You don't want to turn that on at the end after you're done editing because it's going to change everything. So everything you do will get changed if you just throw a LUT on at the end or you throw dehancer on at the end. So I like to kind of tweak it to how I want it to be first and then I build into it. Now you can always go in and make changes, but that's just my preference. Um, but dehancer is so comprehensive that literally this is like its own program. So 
you could just start with Dehancer if you wanted. So I'm going to probably have another video on that later. But anyway, so I have my white balance here. I have my Luma, which is basically just uh, a little bit of light. Sometimes I'll add it, take it away. It's not doing a lot here, but you can see uh, it's just brightening up the picture a little bit. Then my look, typically I'll put tint and things like that in here. Uh, I don't have any tint going on right now. A little bit of a color temperature change, not much, it's very subtle. Uh, I don't think I have anything in my um, exposure adjustment here, which would kind of be the same as Luma. Uh, vignette, I do have a vignette going on here. Basically, what I, I, I like this because this light right here shining on me without the vignette, um, it's lighting all of this behind me. Now, typically, when you're lighting like this, you're going to have uh, flags and things like that to cut all, or cutters to actually stop the light from bleeding back here. But since I'm so close to the wall here, there's not really much I could do with it. And I just set the shot up real quick. So just to make this pop a little bit, I threw a vignette on it and it just kind of focuses the light where I want it to. And the way I did it here, it's just using a power window. So I came down here and just used the elliptical tool and um, where you place this is you know, up to you, but I just like to put it in line with where the light is. So it makes sense. I mean, if it were like this, you know, that doesn't make sense because, because that's not where the light is going. So, you know, put it in here and you just, the softness here of it, if it's really harsh, uh, it doesn't look realistic. So like, if you look at it like that, that looks fake, that doesn't look real, but just by softening it up like this, that looks, that looks more believable. That looks real. And uh, that's kind of what I did here. Um, tent, there's really nothing in there. Um, I'll, I'll sometimes switch these around, the Luma and the tent, but it all depends. A little bit of glow um, is very subtle. You can just see it here in the light area because that's what the glow affects, just these little areas here. But you can see it just a bit. Uh, it's, it's not much, but it's very subtle. So there you go right there nothing in the grain because i'm using dehancer for that um, but then again my lut this is what everything looks like without the lut so it's just this this is without the lut with my enhancements so you can still see the vignette in there and things like that but you know that's s log three now you're looking at rec 709 but now dehancer this right here is a very powerful tool um, I'm still learning it and I'm getting my way around it because there's just a lot in here. There's a lot of different film emulations and things like that. You got, um, compression, you have your color head. This right here is very powerful. The color head, when you turn this on, you can, there's so much you can really manipulate, like even just this here, you know, um, it, you can really dial in your settings perfectly to where you want them to be. But for now, I don't have that on. Uh, film grain, um, you can add grain if you want. I mean, that's large grain, so you probably, you know, make it a little bit smaller and less, less intense. Um, but that's a whole nother thing I'll get into later. Uh, halation, this is something that a lot of people talk about, which is just uh, what you get over the highlights and things like this. This is really intense, so it's it's all red and everything like that. But I'm, I'm not even dealing with that right now. This is a whole nother thing. Bloom is another thing uh, where just your highlights, it gives it a little pop and you can just see it here again in the light. It's kind of similar to what you're doing with the glow. Uh, they're very similar. You can see it here. Um, but I like this. It just gives it a nice little look uh, that just it makes it pop, I guess you could say. So I, I do like um, messing with the bloom here in uh, Dehancer. But uh, there's a lot of other things in here. So some of the stuff I still have to get into and uh, break it down so we can get into it. Now, this part right here, I really like false color uh, because this could tell you where your exposure is. Now, if you don't know anything about exposure, uh, like when you're using waveform monitors, this is false color. Um, and this is basically measuring IRE over here. Um, the higher it is, the more... Uh, it's overexposed if once you start to get in the red. So it's basically exposure by color. So you can see where everything is. And it looks like, you know, with my editing and things like that, some parts of my face are a little bit blown out. But in this case, it's not a big deal. You can also make your own LUTs though, which is kind of cool. So if I 
put all my settings in here and I like what I did, I could actually export a LUT and you know, I could use it in other things or send it to somebody else or whatever like that. So it's, it's nice to have that inside. So, um, but that's just a little breakdown of how I put this together. Um, just talking about this GVM light here. It's a really nice light. And I think that you should look into it. If you don't have any lights and if you're looking to get a light, I would say get the GVM light. And the, the, again, the good thing about this one is if you go with the batteries, you could take it with you. So if you're like a vlogger and things like that and you travel and you may be moving uh, from one place to the next. And let's say you're going to be going to different hotels and things like that. You can just pack the light up and you got your little batteries and it comes with a charger, too. And you can just keep that with you. And it makes it really easy to just uh, carry around. The only thing I will say, though, is the actual softbox that comes with the light. It isn't collapsible. So if you know anything about softboxes, they have these rods in there. And once you put them in, it's like they're in. So you may want to look for uh, one that's collapsible. I know Aperture has one. They're the bigger ones, though. I have to see if I can find some smaller ones. If I do, I'll put it in the description below. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys a quick walkthrough of what my process looks like uh, i like davinci resolve a lot everybody's telling me to switch to it uh, the editing portion of it i am still getting familiar with it and getting to know it uh, i do like it um, but you know just like anything whenever you come from something that you're really familiar with it takes you a while to actually get get your bearings going and things like that so um but I do like DaVinci Resolve and I'll probably do some more videos on DaVinci Resolve. If that's something you want to see, uh, then let me know. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching and um, I'll holler at y'all later. I'm out. Peace.